Well, a warm welcome to this talk, and this is going to be somewhat of a difficult video to watch, I suspect. It's based on this data here from Japan, increased age-adjusted cancer mortality after the third mRNA lipid nanoparticle vaccine dose during the COVID-19 pandemic in Japan. And I'm afraid that title is really quite self-explanatory. Uh, the Japanese researchers are strongly suspecting and give good evidence for increased incidence of several types of cancer, especially after the third booster dose of vaccine. Now, um, let's get straight down to the detail on this and you can decide if you want to watch the rest of the video. I'm just going to read you a few of the main points out here. Um, this is from the conclusion of the study, actually. Um, it says there's a statistically significant increase in age-adjusted mortality rates of all cancer and some specific types of cancer, namely ovarian cancer, leukemia, prostate cancer, lip oral pharyngeal cancers, pancreatic and breast cancers were observed in 2022 after two-thirds of the Japanese population had received the third or later doses of SARS coronavirus 2 messenger RNA lipid nanoparticle vaccines. That is straight from this research paper conducted in Japan, published by the Japanese researchers, not in the United Kingdom, not in the United States, not in Canada. This is coming from Japan, where thankfully there seems to be a little more freedom of scientific expression. Rather than COVID-19 infection itself or reduced cancer care due to lockdown. So they are not saying it's due to reduced cancer care. They're not saying it's reduced to lockdown. They're saying it's an effect of the vaccine. And of course, the researchers know that older people are more likely to die from cancer than younger people. So, of course, they've taken that into account by this uh, age adjusted statistics. Researchers have reported that the SARS coronavirus 2 messenger RNA lipid nanoparticle vaccine may pose the risk of development and progression of cancer. They also say several case reports have described cancer developing or worsening after vaccination and discuss possible causal links between cancer and mRNA lipid nanoparticle vaccination. Now let's go straight on to some of the data that they present here. So that is the paper. Now they present, well I, I actually they don't present, I've given this data. This is the increased uh, mortality in Japan in terms of excess mortality. We see it's been well over 25%, round about now it's about 15%. And it's been high since there's some ambiguity as to whether it was higher in 2020 or not. If it was, it was minimal, but then... Uh, when the uh, vaccination program became more prevalent, uh, 2021, 2022, 2023, into 2024, much higher rates of uh, death. Now, this is deaths overall, not specifically cancers. I will be giving you the differential breakdown in that shortly. Um, just going on with the data, though. Now, what we have here, here, they correlate the data. First and second vaccine doses, third vaccine doses, fourth and fifth. Fifth, and these are this is uh, this one is overall uh, excess mortality. So we can see it's correlated with the uh, the vaccines. Now, when the pandemic itself was raging in 2020, Japan reports essentially no excess deaths. In fact, these grey lines here are less deaths than would be, would be expected. Now, this really bucks the narrative from Western countries. Here we see Japan with a fairly elderly population. Uh, yet lower excess mortality as the 2020 Wuhan virus uh, raged through the country. It makes you wonder why the death rates in the United Kingdom in 2020 appear to be so high. Uh, more, more on that in the next few days. Um, I'm not going to discuss the factors in detail now, but, but lack of care and drugs like morphine and midazolam could be involved in part of that statistic. Uh, compar comparison with Japan really is quite illuminating. So very important to realise 2020, very low death rates, but then much higher as the vaccination programme continued. Now, this is uh, 
ovarian cancer. So here we see the doses of vaccine and here we see the case of ovarian cancer. Now, there was some increase of in ovarian cancer during the pandemic. Uh, but as you see, it got worse when the vaccination program rolled out. So again, we see this strong temporal correlation between quite uh, uh, significantly increased rates, 10, what, 10, 15, 16% increased rates of ovarian cancer um, with the vaccine rollouts here given by these researchers. This one is leukemia. Again, some increase in leukemia in the pandemic, but more so after the first dose and subsequent doses of the vaccine. So again, leukemia, we're seeing about 15% more leukemia than we would expect in Japan. Um, why aren't these data presented in papers in the United States and the United Kingdom is an open question. But let's stick with the Japanese data. This is the relationship for prostate cancer. And again, we see that after the vaccines, prostate cancer increased. Yes, there was some increase during the pandemic, um, but some months with less. But here we see more prostate cancer in this time after the rollouts into 2021 and 2022. Again, um, another weird coincidence. Let's move on to another weird coincidence. It's coincidence on coincidence on, on coincidence on coincidence on coincidence. Um, this one is um, uh, lip, uh, mouth and pharynx, tube at the back of the throat, of course. Again, a few there, but quite a few months there in the pandemic with actually quite a few less than you would expect in the grey. But then the first dose second dose, third dose, fourth dose, we see a great increase in this particular type of uh, cancer. And they do give a fairly uh, complicated but fairly convincing rationale as to how this could happen in, in, uh, in pathophysiological terms. And uh, also, yet yeah, another coincidence, there's been an increase in uh, pancreatic cancers. So again, a few during the pandemic, but some months with less, but after the rollouts of the vaccines, first dose, second dose, third dose, fourth dose, fifth dose, again, we see higher levels of pancreatic cancer. Um, one could be an incident, a coincidence, two, three, Four becomes less likely. Now, the one with breast cancer doesn't reach statistical significance. I'll just give you that here. Uh, but it is there. You can see a recent increase in breast cancer, unfortunately. Uh, thankfully, in Japan, their levels of breast cancer are relatively low, much lower than we have in Western countries. Uh, so it's harder to get good uh, statistically significant data a bit, bit because of that. Now, I think there's an important point here. Um, these are talking about deaths from cancer, not new cases of cancer. So it would only be the most virulent, aggressive forms of cancer that would result in excess deaths within months or a year or even two years. And the other thing is that uh, oncologists in Japan and indeed around the world now are very good at treating cancers. So if these are the people that actually died, then it's reasonable to assume that many more people with these cancers were treated and their lives were extended by the, uh, the oncologists and the clever doctors in Japan. So this is probably not representing the number of new cases. This is representing the number of, of deaths. And what this means into the future, we, we simply don't know. It, it, it is it is concerning. Now, um, that's the main point I wanted to get across. Uh, but I, for those that want more detail, I will now give uh, more detail. Um, no significant excess mortality was observed during the first year of the pandemic in 2020 in Japan. Good news. Uh, however, some excess cancer mortalities were observed in 2021. 
after the vaccine rollout, after mass vaccination with the first and second vaccine doses. These are direct quotes from the paper, by the way. This is not me. These are, this is what the paper says. Peer-reviewed, of course. And significant excess mortality is reserved for all cancers and some specific types of cancer after mass vaccination with a third dose in 2022. Now, um, my plan tomorrow is to... Um, I booked uh, an interview with Professor Dalgleish, who predicted this. Famous oncologist, of course, one of the leading cancer doctors in, in, in the world, really, certainly in the UK. He predicted this a long time ago, based on his understanding of the pathophysiological mechanisms of what could be going on. And sadly, um, I, w I won't say it's prophecies, because prophecy implies something that uh, is supernatural. These, these are scientific predictions. But I won't speak for him. We'll get more detail from him tomorrow. So do tune in for that video. And I'm going to be fascinated to see what his views of this paper are as well. Um, I know he, we've had a brief chat today on the phone and I know he, uh, he is very interested in this paper and it does support his position. Um, during the COVID-19 pandemic, excess deaths in Japan have become a concern. So uh, thank goodness the Japanese are doing some research on this. Why aren't we doing the same? Study aimed to evaluate, of course, it's how age-adjusted mortality rates for different types of cancer in Japan changed during the pandemic. Official statistics from Japan uh, used to compare observed annual and monthly um, mortality rates, age-adjusted mortality rates. Um, based on pre-pandemic figures, 2010 to 2019, which seems reasonable. Uh, 2020, 30 of the pandemic, significant deficit in mortality for all causes. Well, again, it does depend on the uh, on the statistics you use, but um, it, it was certainly low. Uh, and no excess mortality for all cancers, that was true, for sure. 2021, significant excess mortality, 2.1% of uh, for all causes, so 2.1% excess mortality in 2021, but 1.1% of those were cancers, and as I say, um, given that cancer normally takes a few years, thankfully, to, uh, before life is ended as a result of the cancer, um, that those should present 1.1% uh, presenting as quickly or dying as quickly is, is well, yeah, it's a little bit frightening, really, uh, because they were very quick, very quick deaths. Um, 2022 excess mortality in Japan went up to 9.6%, but 2.1% of those were cancers. Um, now, I've no reason to suspect the numbers are different in this country, but we simply don't know. Unfortunately, we're not allowed the, the data. The data is simply not published. Um, or certainly not correlated with vaccination. <clears throat> Whereas in Japan, uh, they did have good records of vaccination rates in different age groups. Number of excess deaths, 2020, 215,000. Number of excess cancer deaths, 7,162, uh, but that's just within the year. How many others are still ongoing is an open question. Lung, colorectal, stomach, pancreas, and liver cancers accounted for 61% of all cancers. Uh, Age-adjusted mortality rates uh, for the four cancers with the most deaths, showed a decreasing trend until the first year of the pandemic. So these cancers were going down, going down quite nicely, actually. Uh, but then that trend was reversed in 2022, 2021, after years of decline. Since February 2021, the messenger MR mRNA lipid nanoparticle uh, vaccine has been available for emergency use and is recommended for all ages at six months and older how could you possibly recommend this for six months year old quite incredible um as of march 2023 80 percent of the japanese population have received their uh, first and second dose of the vaccines 68 <coughs> percent have received a third dose 45 percent have received a fourth dose so they've got good data Excess deaths from all causes other than COVID-19 have been reported in various countries, including Japan. So this is not inconsistent with other countries. Japan is no exception. Japan collects very good data, very well-organized country, large population, good official statistics. 
um, and 80% of the deaths are accurately recorded in Japan according to post-mortem data, which is better than any other country I know. And they also collected vaccination information by age ranges. All cancer deaths are statistically significant. Excess emerged in 2021 and increased further in 2022. In addition, excess, uh, significant excess mortality was observed after August 2021. Whereas mass vaccination of the general population began around April 2021. So we see what April, May, June, July, August Typically a five-month delay. Unfortunately, in Japan, there were excess trends in deaths across most age groups, so affecting younger people as well as older people. The significant increases in mortality for six specific cancer types were unlikely to be explained by a shortage in healthcare services. Not caused by shortages in healthcare services. Now, they then go on to give quite a few of the um, the details of why there could be an increase in cancer. But I think I'll do that separately because it's quite detailed. But for now, let's just note that um, there are several mechanisms um, why this could be the case. Influence of multiple mRNA lipid nanoparticle vaccine doses. They give rationales for that. Uh, thrombogenic, that's blood clot effects of spike protein and lipid nanoparticles because blood clots are already a problem in cancer. That could have accounted for a lot of the acute deaths. And suppression of cancer immunosurveillance because, of course, cancer probably arises regularly, but the immune system takes care of it. And cancer development by sars coronavirus 2 mRNA vaccines, looking at other mechanisms as well. So quite a few mechanisms by which this could Occur. But we'll leave that there for now and um, I'll, I'll clarify my thinking after I've talked to Professor Dalgleish tomorrow, then we'll look at those causes in detail. Um, but for now, I'll just leave you with these graphs. Uh, that was breast cancer, that was pancreatic cancer, that was uh, lip or pharyngeal, that was prostate, leukemia, ovarian and excess mortality altogether. Um, our governments in the West need to be transparent and um, give us this uh, give us this data. Let's leave the last word to the British Prime Minister. Let me be unequivocal from this dispatch box that COVID vaccines are safe, Mr Speaker. <laughs>